We've come to Bosch Sensor Tech to learn about a breakthrough in particulate matter sensing. The product is the BMV 080, and we're going to meet Ahmed El Badri to tell us more about it. So this is the BMV 080. It's a tiny particulate matter sensor. This is typically what people will be using today. This size of device. This is the new one. Ahmed is going to tell us all about it. So here we're going to talk about your product, which is which is fan this it's incredibly small compared to what people will be used to do yep. using today um, you're going to explain to us a bit later how mm. you've managed to do this uh, with some pretty clever technology but first this is a particulate matter sensor yes. um, tell us a bit about particulate matter sensors so um, what do they do what's the principle of operation and and uh, and what kind of devices are they found in today so uh, the bmv 080 is a, as you said the particulate matter sensor so it's an optoelectronic sensor yep. it measures uh, pm 2.5 uh, particulate matter it gives a uh, mass concentration values and to, and to be clear pm 2.5 so that's referring to the partic particle particle size. size it's actually the diameter of the particulate so it okay. measures a uh, diameter of a particulate smaller than or equal to 2.5 micrometers yeah. and typically and you get pm sensors that measure maybe pm 10 yes, pm 2.5 pm 1 that, that yeah. yeah and this sensor actually measures both pm 2.5 and pm 1 so that means okay. also it distinguishes, can distinguish between um, less than or equal to one micrometer in diameter and also uh, less than one, uh, less than or equal to um, 2.5 micrometers in, in diameter. We are going to also support uh, featuring in the future very soon, uh, PM10 as well. PM10. And, uh, and so these are tiny, tiny particles that are in the air around us, in the air that we breathe. Why is it important to measure you know, the, the concentration of these particles so, in the air that we breathe? Yes. So as you mentioned, so as you mentioned, PM two point five is particularly um, dangerous because it gets into our lungs. Without us, it gets through our nostrils. They're so small that you cannot really see them, mm. but they get into our respiratory system. So and la larger particles get they get absorbed by the by the in the nose and the nasal package the, passage before the, they before get to the lungs. They get into okay. the lungs. But yeah. Two point five uh, less than or equal to two point five micrometers are particularly dangerous, and they are uh, characterized as a a very harmful um, uh, uh, source of that actually damages the health. So in cer certain areas, it depends on the area, but these are generated typically from fumes of uh, fire or uh, uh, traffic or um, typical things, also cooking events at home. So I have, for example, a PM sensor at home and it would go crazy when I go cooking. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, and you can, you might be inside working in your office, which is a completely different room and you already feel that it's, it's getting bad. You need mm. to open up the windows mm. because of, and just having the sensor there to give you a signal helps quite a lot. Yeah, and the and the health effects that are associated with um, prolonged breathing of high concentrations of these of these tiny particles. What they kind of things can you find? reduce the uh, uh, health, uh, the life, uh, so the age expectancy. Right. Uh, yeah. So lowering the age, uh, how long longevity of a person lives. So we really don't want to be breathing this stuff. Definitely. This dirty air is yeah. is is a definite Definitely. bad thing. Okay. Um, so uh, and and and. So there are there have been particulate matter sensors sort of available on the market for for, for, for many years. Um, the basic principle of operation is is sort of shining light in, into the air to and, yes. and seeing what, so, what comes back. So basically, uh, yeah, it's laser scattering technique yep. where you have a a, beam, a laser beam emitted from the sensor, and these interact. Uh, so they interact with the particulates in the air. The backscattering light that comes back is then calculated and, and from there you get an estimate or a measurement basically of the particulate yeah. matter. This so, is an absolute measurement. So to put it in, yeah. in, in, in simple terms, the more of these particles that you've got in, uh, in a volume of air, the more light is going to be scattered back exactly. uh, to, to, to exactly. the photodiode. And, 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 and this therefore, is then calculated yeah. and then you get a measurement of mass concentration. Okay, and that measurement of mass concentration is expressed as what? As, as micrograms, micrograms per, per meter cube. Per meter cube. Okay, yeah. all right, good. Um, so, so this is how these sensors do that, uh, perform that that function. So this is the kind of device that people yes. will typically be using today. It's our pin box, but this is around the size of a particular matter sensor module that people yeah. are using today. This here, on the end of my finger, really hard to see, but that's your product. <laughs> much, much smaller. Yeah. Um, 
Why is this one this so is, big? This Why is, is this one so small? 450 times smaller 450. than a conventional yeah. PM yeah, sensor, yeah, yeah. which yeah. is a, a yeah. huge leap yeah. in technology. So people who are using these things, why does this thing have to be so big today? The thing is, it's easier to have constants to work with so that you don't have a lot of variables that you need to deal, deal with when it comes to the algorithm. That's basically what they do. They have an enclosure. They have a fan that pulls in the air. There's an inlet and an outlet. And then measuring inside, so they control the environment. They control a lot of constants, and that helps them do the algorithm okay. uh, with uh, so, less so, complexity. Yeah. So the reason that this thing is, is so big is not so much because the, the electronic sensor itself is large. It's, it's actually a pretty small part. But this yeah. is creating a, a, a controlled Control. chamber uh, with an air inlet, with a fan yeah. that's passing air over the sensor at a at a known controlled exactly. flow rate, exactly. um, and that's why you need this enormous thing in order to do yeah. particular matter uh, measurements today, with uh, with the simple algorithms that these these, these sensor modules Indeed. are using. So how have you got rid of the box, the fan, the air inlet? What's what's going on with this thing that that means you don't need all of this size? Well, it's all about the algorithm. So what we done is we made a very clever uh, software algorithm, and this is uh, where we brought we got to deal with all the different factors. And we, it's, it was quite complicated, but we are able to precisely measure PM 2.5 and also... And in free space. So free space. No, no controlled airflow, no, no, control. no chamber. It's you don't need just... a mechanical uh, airflow. You don't need an inlet and you don't need any, any move. There's no moving parts, no enclosure, which makes the, the sensor quite unique. And uh, so all you need, because it's, as we've described, an optical sensor, it's got a, a laser and a photodiode, you just need a, an, an aperture on the surface of, of yep. whatever your product is yep. so that it can see out into the, into the air. Into but the air. So that's the it. sensor just needs to look into it, into the air, and based on that, they, they do what they do. And the size of the aperture for, on, on the product needs to be? Roughly a meter, uh, one millimeter. One millimeter uh, diameter. OK, diameter. all right. Very good. Um, so here we are. We've got this um, uh, very small sensor, no fan, no, no chamber. Um, what does that mean for someone who's designing a product that this might go into? It could be something wearable. It could be uh, um, a smart thermostat, that kind of, that kind of product. What, what, are the, what are the advantages now that you've got rid of the box and the fan and the chamber? And yeah, so uh, as you said, so it's, uh, it's fanless and yeah. it's also it's noiseless, so yeah. it doesn't generate any okay, noise. Okay, so no noise is one of the... Yes, is it's actually a big advantage yeah. as yeah. this can be quite a hurdle. Will you hear the product, uh, like, you, it would annoy the, the end user in, yeah. in a way. Yeah. So also, uh, the sensor is um, by design also um, uh, dustproof and it can be integrated in a waterproof um, device as well. So um, getting, rid of the, getting rid of the fan means you've got a silent, uh, a silent device. It's, it's not, it's um, dust -proof, not exposed it's, to, to it's with dust. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, uh, it can be got... designed into a waterproof design as well. Yeah. And um, also the size advantage, making it compact and possible to integrate into much smaller devices as well. Yeah, okay. Like wearables. Yeah, so, so let's, let's talk then about um, where you can see this tiny device being, being used in, uh, yeah, what kinds of, of, of products might we find this in? Some of these are compact IoT devices. It's very common to have it. Uh, nowadays, IoT devices are integrating more and more sensors inside, and they're getting smaller and smaller. So you can find these in compact IoT devices. Yeah. You have also air monitors, which can be um, on your tabletop or maybe wall-mounted as well. But there's and there's also smart thermostats, which monitor the indoor air quality. Um, they're becoming more and more advanced and adding new features. Yeah. Uh, so those might be integrated into uh, a smart home automation sort of into, into ventilation automation. systems. So the, when this ventilation detects that there's dirty air, um, it can then trigger the ventilation system to start. control ventilation, yeah. HVAC okay. systems, yeah, yeah. Uh, all that. Uh, you can have a multitude where air quality is important and the sensor is taking care. But also 
it can be a wearable device now okay. because yeah. it's so well, small. It's so small, absolutely. Well, so it, you can it, have yeah. it on your yeah. wrist, you can have it on your uh, shoulder, you can uh, integrate it into many different uh, use cases. Okay, all yeah. right. And it, it, people even, I think, are, are investigating the way that this could be in, integrated into a, a smart mask. Yes, exactly. So uh, in some cases, you can also have it uh, in very unique applications like a smart mask uh, as you to detect the air quality that you inhale outside. And then you can also detect inside what what after going through the filtering. So distinguishing between good and filtered air okay. as well. Very good. Um, and uh, so you've got these really clever al algorithms that are enabling for the first time uh, this kind of optical device to measure particulate matter concentrations in free space, in free air. Um, is, it, is it doing it with the kind of level of accuracy that you need in order to, to be able to take intelligent decisions about ventilation and, 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 and air purification and so we on? We have uh, tested our sensor against uh, analytical devices costing uh, tens of thousands and so on. Yeah. And uh, we see that uh, it's quite, it's precisely consistent, but this one costs much less. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the output that your sensor produces is, so it's a, 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 a digital output? Uh, uh, so actually the, we have an, an SDK, so you get an output of PM 2.5, the mass, uh, mass concentration and PM 1. And as I, as I said, it will also support PM 10. Yeah. So this okay. is what you would be getting. Okay. Digital, and yeah. so that's produced as a uh, as a up. measurement in terms uh, of, uh, of micrograms per meter cubed. The communication per is done uh, mm. I square C SPI. So. Right. Okay. So compatible with any any normal yeah. microcontroller. Or, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, very good. I've been picking this device up. Um, Yes. You're going to tell me that. That, that I've, I've, <laughs> you yes. You should not I, do that. I shouldn't. So I, I, I mean, I've broken the first rule of using, yes. <laughs> of using your so, product, haven't I? Uh, yes. So, yeah, so um, we're going to, so, yeah, viewers can go and see a, a separate video that talks about the issues we around will, handling integrated. Will, but basically, <laughs> I, I shouldn't be picking this up. That's, yes. that's, that's uh, the, the, yeah. the sensor is typically handled, as you see, there's a stiffener on yep. the sensor. Yeah. And uh, you're supposed to handle that with a tweezer or a vacuum pen. Okay. And you're not allowed to touch any any other part of the, the whether it's a flex PCB or yep. components or the sensor part, you're not allowed to touch any of that. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Right. I understand. So I've done the wrong thing, but it's you're okay. Good. You're we can, we okay. can play with it since it's already gone. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. So here we are. I'm doing the wrong thing with the sensor, but if you're interested in uh, in using this sensor in evaluating it, then there are shuttle boards available for you to do that. And also go and see our separate videos that are about uh, integration of this device and how you handle it. Clue: you don't handle it like this. <laughs> So there's a ton of reasons why you'd be interested in exploring the features of the BMV 080 particulate matter sensor. And you can do so uh, with one of the shuttle boards. So Ahmed, maybe you can tell us, uh, we've got, the, can see the, uh, the board here, you've got the sensor. I, I see it's behind a, an aperture with a, a dark ink glass um, and, and some headers and, and then some connectors underneath. So just tell us, how do you use this BMV 080 shuttle board. So the shuttle board is meant to be an early evaluation and also uh, for proof of concept. Uh, you will find uh, basically it connects to our application board, similar to our other shuttle boards which we have in our uh, product portfolio. So an application board is a board with a, a microcontroller on it and that can connect and, and to a PC. Also you can use it for BLE communications. Right, so it has okay. a lot of. Uh, features supported and you can use it then for proof of concept. So you either use our drivers, uh, we have uh, readily available examples on GitHub and additionally you can also plug and play. So we have also software supporting um, plug and play where you can just uh, plug and test the sensor and see see um, outputs. Okay, so you can plug this shuttle board into one, either one of your application boards or into your own proof of concept board um, uh, and you've got full software support for it as well with PC and uh, uh, for, yes. for, for, for support on a PC and application examples through GitHub and so on. Yes. And this board is, is available for anyone who wants it now? Yes, and you can get it through our distribution partners. Thank you.